On today's episode, I want to look at an interview that Elon Musk did for TED Talk, where he talked about his boring company, Tesla, rockets, and a bunch of other cool stuff. What I really want to look at is just how Elon seems to answer questions in such a fascinatingly cool way. When you think an answer is going to be one way, he gives you an even more exciting answer to that in his very dry, cool sense. So I kind of want to break down how he answers certain questions about the future and how he sees the future, because this honestly is how we want our innovators and our geniuses of the world who want to make their mark for good in the world to act and to talk. So let's start with The Boring Company. This is a company that Elon's created for the idea of building a tunnel under the city of LA to alleviate traffic. Now, when I first thought of it, I thought, okay, one long tunnel that goes from one point to another point underneath LA. Okay. This is to create the beginning of what will hopefully be a 3D network of tunnels. So there are a couple of key things that are important in having um, a 3D tunnel network. First of all, you have to be able to integrate the entrance and exit of the tunnel seamlessly into the fabric of a city. So by having a, an, an elevator, sort of a, a, sort of a, a car skate that's on, on an, uh, an elevator, you can integrate the entrance and exits uh, to the tunnel network oh just my. by using two parking spaces. Um, and then the car gets on a skate. There's no speed limit here, so uh, we're designing this to be uh, able to operate at 200 kilometers an hour, about 130, 200 kilometers an hour, or about 130 miles per hour. Uh, so you should be able to get from, say, uh, Westwood to LAX in six minutes, five, six minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, just from Westwood to LAX in five, six minutes, because normally it would take 45 minutes to an hour. That's not just one tunnel, one normal driving through a mountain kind of tunnel. <laughs> so moving right along into the discussion about Tesla, the Model 3 is coming out in July, and with the improvements to the camera systems on the Tesla, the interviewer asked Elon, how long until we start seeing fully automated Teslas driving around? I think the, we're still on track for being able to go um, cross country from LA to New York by the end of the year, fully autonomous. Um, and okay, so, 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 so a car, by the end of the year, you're saying yeah. that someone's gonna sit in a Tesla without touching the steering wheel, tap in New York, mm -hmm. off it goes, yeah. won't have to ever touch the wheel by the end of 2017. Yeah, essentially November or December of this year, we should be able to go from, yeah, from, all the way from a parking lot in California to a parking lot in New York, no controls touched at any point during the entire journey. Do you see what I mean by how he answers these questions? He's not being arrogant in any way, and he's definitely not being coy or facetious. He is genuinely, he has already accepted that things will occur in his lifetime that no one else imagined could. He has, he has set in motion things that he expects and demands will be accomplished bef you know, before the end of this year we're going to see Teslas be, being able to drive from California to New York and you won't even have to touch a control. And he's just like, um, yeah, November, December, you know, no biggie. Elon has talked about this before, but when you own a Tesla, when you buy the Tesla or lease the Tesla, there will be a moment in time where you can actually go to work, park your car, but have your car go off and perform an Uber-like service. Now that sounds like, well, there's going to be a lot of regulations, you know, maybe it will happen, who knows? This is how Elon answers that question. 
Is that, is that really likely? Yeah, I, I, absolutely this is what will happen. So there will be a shared autonomy fleet where you buy your car and you can choose to use that car exclusively. Um, you could choose to um, have it be used only by friends and family, only by uh, five-star uh, other drivers who are rated five-star. You can choose to uh, share it sometimes, but not other times. Um, that's, that's, that's 100% what will occur. It's just a question of when. It's not, well, we have to look at this regulation. Oh, well, we'll have to get permits. This will have to be that. It's just when. He's already thought about everything else, how to handle it. It's going to happen. Now, you may have heard that Tesla is also making a semi-truck. Uh, this is something that is in the works, will probably be revealed in September. Well, Elon has some words for anybody who thinks a diesel is probably still going to be the best route for those kind of semi-trucks. Um, and this is something which uh, people do not today think is possible, to think the truck doesn't have enough power or it doesn't have enough range. Um, and then with the, with the Tesla Semi, we want to show that you no know, an electric truck actually can out-torque uh, any diesel uh, Semi. Um, and you know, pull, if, if you had a tug of war competition, uh, the, like the Tesla semi will, will tug the, the diesel semi uphill. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> He's not being hyperbolic. He absolutely means it. I mean, you, just, just look at his face. Look at his face at the end here where everybody's laughing. He's stone cold. This dude is serious. And then moving along, they jumped into the solar roofing project that Elon is also working on with Tesla. And he starts to describe how strong and how long lasting these roof tiles with solar panels in them actually will be. And it will last, I mean, we thought about like having the, the, the warranty be infinity. Um, but then people thought, well, that might sound like we were just talking rubbish. But <laughs> but actually, the, the like the this is like t this is tough and glass. Like well after the house has collapsed, um, and there's nothing there, the roof will tie the glass tiles will still be there. So with this solar roofing, with the semi, other Teslas, they're all dependent upon lithium-ion batteries. And Elon has already taken the step in the direction by building the Gigafactory, where the lithium-ion batteries are produced to lower the cost of the batteries. And in the response to the question of, well, how fast are you producing them uh, that we see here in this video? And how many gigafactories would we actually need so that we won't have to feel guilty about consuming so much energy? Here is how Elon had to respond to that. That's the gigafactory, um, the w progress so far in the gigafactory. Uh, eventually, you can sort of roughly see that there's, it's a, there's sort of a diamond shape Overall, when it's fully done, it'll, be, it'll look like a giant diamond, or that's the idea behind it. And it's aligned on true north. There's a small detail there. And, um, and capable of producing like 100, eventually like 100 gigawatt hours of, of yeah. uh, batteries a year. 100 gigawatt hours. We think probably more of it, yeah. And they're actually being produced right now already here, right? They're in production there's already. A, there's, you guys put out this video. Yeah. I mean, is that speeded up? Or? That's, the, that's the slowed down version. That, how, yeah. how fast does it actually go? Well, um, when it's running at full speed, um, you can't actually see the cells without a strobe light. <laughs> it's just blur. <laughs> and how, I mean, one of, your, one of your core ideas, Elon, about, about what makes an exciting future is a future where we no longer feel guilty about energy. Um, how, help us picture this. I mean, how many gigafactories, if you like, does it take to, to get us there? Uh, it's about 100. Roughly. It's not 10, it's not 1,000, most likely 100. See, I, I, I kind of yeah. find this amazing. Like, you can actually picture, if, if that's right, you can picture what it would take to move the world off this vast yeah. fossil fuel thing. It's like you're building one, cost $5 billion, maybe the next one, or whatever, 5 to $10 billion. Yeah. Like, it's, it's kind of cool that you can picture that, that project. And you're planning to do uh, a Tesla, or at least another two, announce another two this year. I think I will, we'll announce locations for somewhere between two and four gigafactories later this year. Yeah, probably four. 
Whoa. Yes. Whoa, indeed. I, I mean, it's just... He just... And moving right along to SpaceX, Elon's other project where he is using uh, rockets to eventually one day get to Mars. But we know now that successfully he's been able to send a rocket into space to deliver a payload to the space station and to bring that second stage back to planet Earth to be reused again and sent right back up. Uh, this is obviously really cool stuff, but the end goal is in 20 years' time to have people on Mars. And here's just how casually Elon explains the mission to Mars. And you've designed this outrageous uh, rocket to do it. Help us understand the scale of this thing. Well, I think visually you can see that um, person. Yeah, and that's the vehicle. So if that, if that was a skyscraper, that's like a 40... Did I read that? 40 stories? Yeah, a little, maybe a little more, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the thrust level of this is really... Um, um, this configuration is about four times the thrust of, a, of the Saturn V moon rocket. Um, four or, times the thrust of the biggest rocket humanity ever created before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, um, I mean, in... As one does. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, in, in units of 747, I guess 747 is only about a quarter, a quarter million pounds of thrust. So that that's so there are um, for every 10 million pounds of thrust, there's 47, 47. So this this would be the thrust equivalent of 100, 120 747s, with all engines blazing. And so even even with a machine designed to escape Earth's gravity, I think you told me last last this thing could actually take a fully loaded 747, people, cargo, everything, into, yeah. into, into orbit. Exactly. This, this can take <laughs> a fully loaded 747 with, with maximum fuel, maximum passengers, um, maximum cargo on the 747. This can take it as cargo. <laughs> so, so, so based on this, you, you uh, presented um, recently this interplanetary transport system, which um, um, is visualized this way, and this is a yeah. scene you picture, what, in, in I mean, 30th time, 20th time? I, people walking into this, this rocket. I mean, I'm hopeful it's sort of in the eight, eight, year, eight to ten-year time frame. Aspirationally, that's our target. Our internal targets are more aggressive, but I think... Um, so this, this thing, vehicle this seems thing. quite large, and is large by comparison with other rockets. I think um, the, the, the future spacecraft will be will make this look like a rowboat. I mean, this is... The, the, the future spaceships will be truly enormous. No, not in 20 years, eight or nine years. More aggressive internally. It's just this rocket is going to be dwarfed by even larger uh, rockets in the future. This is a man who just can't help but give the best answers to questions about the future. Uh, let's continue just listening about the, the mission to Mars. Why do we need to build a city on Mars with a million people on it in your lifetime? Which I, I think is kind of what you've said you'd love to do. Yeah, I think it's important to have... Um, a future that is inspiring and appealing. I mean, I just think that there, like, there have to be reasons that you get up in the morning and you want to live. Like, why do you want to live? What, what's the point? What, what inspires you? What, what do you love about the future? And if, if we're not out there, if the future does not include being out there among the stars uh, and being a multi-planet species, I find that, in, that it's incredibly depressing if that's not the future that we're going to have. And on that note, I think we're going to leave it right there. It was a great interview to watch. Uh, check it out um, on TED Talk, uh, the full interview. Elon Musk, he, too bad he didn't come sooner uh, in our lives. Uh, we could have cut into the fossil fuel industry uh, a bit sooner. But we have him now, and he's making uh, great accomplishments with the time that he has on Earth, and 
on Mars eventually. So this was another episode of Simple Not Easy. Let me know your comments below, what you think about Elon's missions uh, with Tesla, with SpaceX, with The Boring Company, and we'll see you next time.